But you can pull off the three underneath. What was that, 16? 16. No, I'm just going to go towards the eight. It's easier okay. to see. But... There we go. Just let me get on the knee cut. Perfectly good ball joint otherwise, had it not been for twisting off those three. And uh, it's nice and tight, but of course, getting it off there, you rip up the boot. So we'll order it and have another one tomorrow morning. Cool. Meanwhile, no car. no car, and we need to um, go see if we can. We want to order it. What's that? Yeah, I just want to make sure I can get that. Um, what I need is a 516 to 12.38 drive, which is going to be a little bit difficult, but we'll go check it out. So I think we're done here for now. Look at this. It's got a sensor here that tells you the position of the lower control arm. Here's the sensor. It's got a little arm, and it just connects to this bracket. So just to tell you that... I don't know. It tells you the position of that lower control arm for some reason. Something to do with the, uh, maybe, I don't think it's active suspension, but something that it's looking at. But, uh, okay, so lower ball joint, axle, done. Okay, so this is the, uh, getting this front axle out, the inner axle. And it's got the 12 point bolts there, 12 point like a Torx head. But I'm using a 6.8 millimeter socket. Just a regular hex head. But I got a 3 8 inch drive on here so it can handle the torque to take these off. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. We've already got the inner axle hub pulled out.
Okay, we left. So now we should have the ability to pull this out. The inner one's off. That one's off. And there's our axle. Comes with all new bolts because the, uh, the existing ones are all stretch, essentially stretched. You torque them and then stretch them, preset them out. So all new bolts for not only the, the hub here, but also the spline on the outer end because they all get stretched. Also comes with a pack of grease I think it's good because there's a big glob of grease in the end of this which is pretty much serving only to lube the tip of this while all of the ball bearings and the tracks are totally clean except right here is a little bit of grease got in there so there is a, a little bit of a gasket in there this one has some holding rubber things to hold it from rotating I'm going to take that off. <clears throat> Get off my hands just a little bit here. Get any dust or debris. And start with this grease. Bringing it in here a little bit more. Packing it kind of like an old wheel bearing. Used to smack them in your hands to drive the grease down in there. Kind of do the same thing around these balls and these tracks with this grease, and then I'll open up the pack that they sent and add some more to it as well. It may seem like a lot, and sure enough, a lot of this could just end up in the cap again when we're done or after we run it for a while. But at least it's starting off on the ball bearings and tracks and the races, however you want to refer to all that stuff, which will get it going in the direction of at least lubricating it somewhat better than it does just by sitting in the cap. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that's in the cap. cut off of this tons of grease I'll use a little bit on this end once I put it into the, the splines into the into the hub and uh, and when you pull off this little plug here you can actually see well there's some I apologize I uh, just came over here and greased up this thing giving a very good description of greasing this up Applying all the grease into here, much like you would with uh, when you're packing a wheel bearing, slapping it in there, kind of, and just kind of working it down in there. I then took the bolts and came through and pushed the, the blobs of grease out of the bolt holes and wiped those off so it's mostly out of there. Stuck the little gasket on there and then put the cap on. Just lined it up. Unfortunately, none of that recorded, but there you go. In 10 seconds, you just got it all anyway. Now, this is. Uh, going to go in first as I was saying this top part extends like this that's how you get the, the movement and the suspension when it moves and your axle moves up and down the spline in here um, this is going to uh, also allow you to once you get this inner hub bolted in to be able to pull this out and engage the splines out here into the wheel hub uh, and, and connect it with the spline the spline nut 
right here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is go ahead and get this thing in here. That will again require me, me to have uh, uh, the help of an assistant to be able to uh, hold the brakes um, periodically as I rotate that around. And I found out that works better than even the emergency brake. Putting it in gear doesn't do it. Uh, and then holding the emergency brake will, or I'm sorry, standing hard on the brakes is required to keep it from, from uh, rotating while you're tightening these down, especially once you start to do the, uh, the stretch on the bolts. So here we go. put the outer spline in there and get that started so I can turn the at least turn the hub so uh, I guess I'm gonna pull this off I've already got the rubber cap out of the end I've pulled off the netting I'm gonna put a little bit of this grease around the splines going I'm gonna wipe out this the other side was pretty rusty looking and so I used a little bit of uh, good before you clean some of the rust out before I greased it but I still wiped it out before I applied the grease okay before I start cranking on it. Alright, so at least that's in there enough now where it's drawing it in, but you can see it drawing it in. There we go. So now I'll be able to rotate it at least with the with the wheel. Okay, this thing is pretty big. Huge pain in the butt because the uh, the old bolts were that much longer than the new bolts. And so it was really hard to get them down in there equally. And so I was trying to use these, they're not equally, hard to get them started straight. Uh, trying to use these brackets as well which came with the old bolts but then when you do that you're just making even less threads that can get into the into the, um, the inner axle hub so I'm not using those brackets the new uh, mounting didn't come with those anyways so just gonna do without them Good sign. I went in and bottomed out at least. And now we're all bottomed out. So, what do next is uh, I need you to be on the brakes. And the first one was uh, what was our torque? 70. That's 200 for the metal. Oh, I still have it set. So it's 50. It's like it's like 52 there. essentially, 52, 70 newton meters, right? It's like 52 round foot pounds, yeah. And then, so I'll torque them all first. Okay, you holding them?
So I'm just going to the top position here. Makes a straight shot in. Okay, so now the fun part is after you do that, get them all torqued down to the 70 newton meters, or roughly 52 foot pounds, is you're supposed to load, put an extra one quarter of a turn on it for the stretch. So for it being straight to the side, it would be straight down for one quarter of a turn. Are you holding them? important that you keep track of which ones you're on here and hold it because you don't want to double stretch any. so if you need to you could always mark them so straight out to the right if you make gauges that you can put on to tell how many degrees of turn you put on them so that you can make sure you get the 90 degrees of turn. Okay, you hold them? Yeah. But this I think is good enough. Let go. And hold them. This is the last one because a 90 degree turn is pretty easy and so is a 180 that we'll be doing on the big nut at the end here. But, you can hold But the, uh, if I was doing head gaskets, no way. If I was having to do the, uh, the stretch on those bolts, I would definitely use a, a gauge. This can be a little less scientific than a head bolt. Using good tools, you do not want anything to snap when you're pushing on them that hard. That takes quite a bit of pressure. Okay, you're off of it, right? You're off of them. Turn the wheel left a little bit. More. And a little more. Get it straight, essentially. Steering wheel straight right there. Okay. Good enough. I'm just trying to get it lined up here. Whoo! 27 millimeter. Down to this. So this one is what was it, channel two? Huh? Yeah. Two hundred newton meters, which is one hundred forty-seven and a half foot pounds, and then one hundred eighty degree turn. So my torque wrench set at a one hundred forty-seven and a half foot pounds. On the brake. This might be hard to do without the ball joint in it slipping forward. Okay. So now I take this 180 degrees. So Break for a second. That's pretty much straight up and down. When I got pressure on it, put the pressure on it in a tightening direction and then mark. That is, and if I come straight across from that, that should be 180 degrees. Actually, I think I'm going to go, go ahead and let off of it. I want to rotate it around here so I get a better, better view on it. So 
there's my 180. Okay, turn it left just a little. Okay, and hold the uh, brakes hard. Make sure that's seated good. And here we go. Let's see if we can get this. Right to the mark. 180 degrees. So it's gonna be pretty easy. I'll go ahead and get this. joint no greaser sealed and it's for the left so very good to go Okay, so I didn't want to use the half inch uh, break over bar because I didn't want to break those bolts off again. Switched over to the 3 8 drive, 15 millimeter. Ah, there we go, that's much better. You can't see it, but when I had it cranked around, it wouldn't, uh, bolt wouldn't feed up in there. Unfortunately, having the, the uh, axle in means I have to do this completely by hand. And of course, now it's going to twist on me and I probably won't be able to get a LMP in there. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a little piece of uh, Allen wrench off here, hoping to get this guy in here. hitting the axle Shh. Trimble tool here we come <laughs> 